250x. We usually add a little water as we mix to keep the dust down and make the mix moist before we start planting the seeds. It's easier to handle this way. Now we have our pots filled up with our moist mix of peat and sand and we have applied seeds. As you can see we're not shy with the number of seeds that we put in each pot. Basically what we've done here is filled the pots three quarters full, um, applied a nice portion of seeds and then we just kind of top up the uh, pots with another uh, half inch or so of our sand and peat mix. It is quite moist at this time. We had plenty of seeds this year so we made quite a large planting. At this point we are putting our seeds on our growing rack. This is where we start the growing. You can see the pots are in trays. The trays hold water and I keep them very moist. I'd always like to see a good half inch of water in the tray. So you can see the water there. And the trays are put on racks and uh, there are three or four levels on the racks. Each level has its own set of grow lights and I take the lower grow lights and place them right up against the bottom of the tray. That way the warmth from the grow light warms the pots of germinating seeds. It provides them that warm condition that they, they like to have in the spring. At this point you can see this is probably a week into growing. We have germination. Um, several of the seeds have sprouted. They won't necessarily all sprout in each pot, but we usually get a fairly decent number of seeds growing in each plot, each pot that was planted. So they sit under 24 hours of grow light and with the, you can see the white uh, light fixture below the trays and that provides warmth. I found that that's very important. Again, this is looking in probably 10 days to 2 weeks after planting. We've got 
some nice plants growing at this point. I would typically still keep them uh, just in these growing pots uh, on the rack uh, until they get a little bit more mature. You can see the light fixture in contact with the plants there. So these are the fully grown plants once I have moved them to the uh, hydroponic system that we have. Um, when the plants are maybe three to four inches tall, I've moved the, the capacity of the hydroponic ebb and flow system. Um, and this year I had too many and I had to leave some under the rack. So some are un some are in the hydroponic system. That's those there. You can see they're probably a little healthier, uh, and they've grown quite well. This at this point, this is in June, and we planted them in February. So you can do the math. That has a big, powerful light. That's the water supply underneath. And here we are on our way out to the marsh on planting day. sent the students out to this area. It, it was in pretty bad shape, but uh, after uh, the little channels were built in it to drain it with the tide, um, it's getting to be now a better habitat, and we're trying to fill that area up with new Spartina plants. had a very good harvest this year and I found that when I took our plants down to the marsh to plant them they were about the same uh, height as what the grass was that was naturally growing. This is at Gooseneck Salt Marsh, Hazard Road, Newport, Rhode Island. several trips down to plant on this day and so I hope this information has been helpful to you and I wish you much success in your Spartina growing we've getting it we're getting it down pretty well <laughs>